Hey y'all, this is Ms. Osborne and welcome to World History Flipped. Today we're going to be focusing on the beginning of civilization. Early humans started to spread from Africa to other parts of the world and they started to struggle to survive, but they ended up using agriculture and other tools to help them to make it through. The essential questions that we'll be focusing on in this video are how did early people spread around the world, how did early agriculture develop, spread, and change society, and then what characterized the world's first civilizations and where did they develop? Golden Hawk historians will analyze the impact of tools and agriculture on humans during the Stone Age, evaluate the extent to which agriculture and tools helped civilizations develop, and identify features of a civilization. While you're watching, make sure that you're taking notes in either Cornell or outline format as we've talked about in class. It's okay if you need to pause or rewind the video to make sure that you understand all the information and are taking good notes. When we're studying the distant past, that past goes back more than one million years. And a lot of the story remains a mystery because history doesn't start until written history began. Prehistory is the time before the development of writing. In order to study this time period, scholars and historians have to study artifacts. Artifacts are objects that people in the past have made or used. Artifacts are things like pottery, like tools, um, and other artifacts like that that we can use to help us to understand understand what life was like. In order to understand people's culture back then, or a society's knowledge of art, beliefs, and customs and values, historians use these artifacts. There's two types of scholars that study these artifacts. Archaeologists, which are people that study human material and remains to learn about people in the past, and anthropologists who study fossils to learn about human origins. Humans originated in Africa, but as people began to develop, they started to move out of Africa and adapt to different environments. People used Beringia to start moving to other parts of the world. The first prehistoric period is called the Stone Age. You might be familiar with this because many people characterize the Stone Age with cavemen. During this period, people made tools mainly from stone, which is why it's called the Stone Age. The first part of the Stone Age is referred to as the Paleolithic Era, or Old Stone Age, that lasts from 2.5 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. People during the Stone Age lived as nomads, which means that they moved from place to place as they followed migrating animal herds. Many of these people lived in caves or rock shelters, which is where we get the term cavemen from. Many of these nomads were dependent on hunting and gathering, which was hunting for fish and gathering wild plants, berries, nuts, and other foods. The men primarily hunted while women mainly gathered. Technology was also started to be developed during this time. Technology isn't just your iPhone or any sort of um, electronic device, but rather technology is the application of knowledge, tools, and materials that were used to make life easier. The first tools weren't an iPhone, but rather crude chip stones that were able to be used for sawing things and also wood and bone. As people started moving to colder climates, they also discover fire, animal skin clothing, and how to build shelters. Anthropologists believe that many of the early people practiced a religion called animism. Animism is the belief that all things in nature have spirits. It's more this idea that the plants have spirits, the animals have spirits, and they all um, celebrated that. As more sophisticated tools were developed, the Stone Age gave way to the New Stone Age, otherwise known as the Neolithic era. That is characterized by the advances in tool making that allow people to make more specialized tools. At this point, think more like knives rather than just like crude arrowheads. But most of the developments during the New Stone Age actually have to do with food. In the Neolithic era, they had the Neolithic Revolution, which was when they developed agriculture into farming. So instead of just gathering wild nuts and berries, people began to cultivate those um, nuts and berries and make their own crops. And this allowed them to all settle in one place. Once people began settling in one place, they also began to domesticate animals. Domestication is the selective growing or breeding of plants and animals to make them more useful to humans. They would then use these animals to help them with agriculture. Eventually, people learned how to make tools out of metal like copper and bronze that was more durable, and this period became known as the Bronze Age. 
Early farmers would continue to develop their farming techniques to increase farm production. The most significant advancement was the development of irrigation systems. These irrigation systems created ditch that would ditches that would allow fields and to um, get connected to water sources, and all, that allowed for the crops to be watered on a more regular basis. With irrigation systems, the farmers could plant a lot more crops, which led to a surplus or an excess of food, and that could support larger populations. With a larging popu population, there wasn't as many people needed to farm anymore. And so people were able to have different jobs and they began specializing in other jobs such as metal workers, artists, religious leaders. This division of labor became known as um, an economic arrangement in which each worker specialized in a particular task or job. The food surpluses and the division of labor resulted in economical changes. Early farming villages had traditional economies where economic traditions were made on customs, tradition, or ritual, and many of them had a barter system. I'll give you this chicken for that pot. As farming villages developed, food became extra valuable and leaders began to make decisions based on the population. And as populations increased, the smaller villages developed into larger cities that were more densely populated, had more diverse areas with more than one family living in one place, were formally organized with boundaries, and also became places where trade commonly occurred. A civilization is a complex and organized society. It generally originates out of a large city. So it's more than just one city, but rather a collection of cities altogether. There were four main civilizations when the first civilization started, and they were all known as river valleys because of the river that ran through there and the valleys that they were settled in. One of the river valleys was Mesopotamia that was settled in the Tigris and Euphrates River the Egyptians that were settled near the Nile River, the Indus River Valley in India, and the Huang He River or the Yellow River Valley in China. In the river valleys, the rivers flooded annually to allow for fertile soil that could support a growing population. There are eight main characteristics of civilizations, developed cities, organized government, formalized religion, specialization of labor, social classes, record keeping, and writing, art and architecture, and public works. As we go through the different river valleys and all of the other civilizations we study in this class, pay attention to look for those eight characteristics and how they represent themselves in each class, in each civilization. So developed cities are early cities that served as political, economic, and cultural centers for surrounding area. The cities develop social and economic institutions and also organizations to help de um, develop and grow the city. Organized governments were formed as a response to the needs of a growing population. As populations grew, they needed to create laws and systems of justice. They also gathered taxes and organized military efforts to support the city. Formal religious institutions also formed and they had ceremonies, rituals, and other forms of worship. Many of them sacrificed animals or offered food to gain the gods' favor. Also, different religions also developed during this time period. Religious leaders gained power by being able to interpret the will of the gods because this government and religion were closely tied. Many of the religions then were polytheistic, meaning that they had more than one god. Poly means many. The specialization of labor had increased and new jobs had developed to meet the needs of the people. A new skill called artisanism skilled craftsmen that devoted their time to basket weaving, carpentry, metalworking, or pottery. Social classes also developed. As specialization occurred, there was now a social stratification where there was different jobs needed and different jobs had different places in society. Um, based on wealth, occupation, and influence, rulers, priests, and nobles ranked the highest, merchants and artisans were next, then farmers and unskilled workers, and at the bottom of the, the social order were slaves. Writing developed as people needed a way to keep permanent records, mainly carried out by scribes. Writing wasn't necessarily because they had to, but rather because they needed to. Each civilization developed a different system for keeping records, as how come we ended up with so many different languages and alphabets. The first writing system were pictorial, meaning that they were pictures, kind of like hieroglyphics. But as people wanted to express more complex ideas, alphabets formed, especially with the Phoenicians because of trade. Early civilizations also developed calendars that helped them to keep up with farming schedules. Think more like the farmer's almanac. 
The style and techniques of different artists used to reflect each civilization's culture. So each culture developed their own statues of their own gods, heroes, and rulers. Art was often used to reflect civilization's power and prestige. Think how big the Egyptian pyramids are. Architecture, like temples, were also built to honor the gods and represent the power of that civilization. As civilizations grew, the work of building things such as roads, schools, and reservoirs, and irrigation dishes, like in the picture up in the right corner, were carried out by government officials using tax dollars. Projects were meant to benefit the city, protect it from attack, and also ensure it had a food supply. As rival leaders often battled for power, some conquering many cities and villages, creating the first city-states. These city-states came together to form larger um, governmental-type organizations. A group of states or territories controlled by one ruler is an empire. There are a couple different factors that cause a civilization to change and move. Environmental influences like storms and floods, droughts, earthquakes, and volcanoes can change the borders. A need for resources such as metals, stones, trees, and water. Cultural diffusion that occurs as a result of expansion and warfare. Cultural diffusion is the spread of ideas, customs, and technologies from one people to another through trade, migration, and missionaries. Cultural diffusion is something that will happen throughout world history, not just in civilizations. Expansion and warfare also caused civilizations to change because as civilizations grew, they needed more land and resources. Warfare was waged for the control of that land, the people, and the resources. And oftentimes when that, peer, that victor took over that area, they would also change the culture in that area to re reflect more of their own. Now that you've finished watching this video, go back and look over your notes. Make sure that you have all the necessary vocabulary. Thanks for joining me for this video, and I'll see you in class.